what is the member to really cost? That's, you know, um, uh, for cellular and paracellular anatomy and actually you know, for uh, arachnoid membranes um, and uh, actually everything that's concerned with the basic brain is this is a very interesting structure. What you see here is actually a, a picture of uh, Key and Vetus. Uh, they had an amazing atlas in 1895. <coughs> and what you see here is the chiasm and you uh, basal artery with SCAs and Posteriors, and you see this this weird uh, uh, leaf here, uh, the arachnoid membrane. This is actually the membrane relicus. At that time, it was not called the membrane relicus. It was only called the membrane relicus for a uh, uh, lot later. Uh, Lilicus was a, a radiographist, and in 1957 published an article where he said, "Yeah, I would be uh, doing numeral uh, uh, encephalographies, and I would be uh, looking at." Uh, I would be inserting contrast into the ventricles, and what I would see is that contrast would go only to above the intercolumnar system, and I couldn't understand that. So he did a couple of uh, sections. <coughs> what he came out across is this section, uh, which Yesher also names in his book, uh, and the best article on the subject is by Professor Ford with Professor Killer in Cincinnati uh, at the Mayfield Clinic, and um, this summarizes what the memory looks like. It's actually uh, an arachnoid uh, membrane which expands from the posterior clinoid all the way to the mammillary bodies and it usually has two leaves and that the first leaf is a diencephalic leaf which is uh, almost always present in the mesencephalic leaf which is usually incomplete and goes um, almost all the way to the base of the artery. And what you also see here is that the, a lot of the perforators of the posterior communicating artery are actually piercing this membrane because we're right, we, we've submitted an article, a review about the membrane ludicrous. Um, right now, uh, we hope we get to. And um, what we what we discovered is that of all the literature that has been uh, over the membrane ludicrous uh, across all these years, they, nobody has actually come across a consensus that has said, okay, what is the lateral border? Does it come into contact with the oculomotor nerve of meat, or and what do the arteries do? Do they pierce it or not? So, if I'm to summarize what we discovered in the review, is the uh, the hypothalamic arteries usually pierce it, the peripheries of the posterior communicating artery, and, and it usually encircles um, the oculomotor nerve forming a sheath all the way. And then the fibers go all the way to that ocular motor system I was telling you about. Um, and sometimes it's not present in 25% of the cases. Um, and it usually has two leaves. There are some authors which authors with describe three leaves or four leaves. But that's usually because, you know, what's most <coughs> difficult here is how you dissect it. How do you come to this very, very thin, paper thin? substance in order to preserve it completely and, and, and understand uh, how it goes. So uh, Froelich uh, defines three uh, uh, possibilities. Uh, it's either um, two stemming from two separate directions or same stem and at a certain point the mesencephalic leaf come, or you have just one leaf which is the membrane glycopist itself. And if you do a dissection, you see here is the diencephalic leaf. So you are looking from above, and uh, this is chiasm, you have the cella, and this is the diencephalic leaf. And if you open it, <coughs> you can see the mesencephalic leaf extending almost all the way to the basal, but not always all the way. It usually has some arachnoidal dependencies that just uh, attach to the basal. And sometimes, in some percent of the cases, there is no membrane of the so the suprachiasmatic, interpeduncular, uh, and, and lateral systems are just one big system. And it's completely, if you look at it, uh, this is the diencephalic leaf, this is the this is So why is this so important? Uh, you see also the relationship with the third and the pecan <coughs> and the perforators. Why is this important? Because when you're doing the third uh, ventriculostomy, you <coughs> also have the membrane of the because if you don't, uh, Buxton uh, published a very good article in 1996 
If you don't, then you might have a failure of your uh, cystinoscopy. A very good article on it, this is one by a local man in Norway, uh, in 2009. So they just show all the cisterns again, uh, the carotid cistern, chiasmatic, interpeduncular, prepontine. And they also do this very beautiful dissection. So you see, this is carotid artery. This is the posterior communicating T1 basilar. They've removed everything that you could remove here. They've elevated the chiasm and the carotid. Um, before it's, uh, uh, it's basically the uh, communicating segment. And you see here the diencephalic membrane extending all the way to the, from the uh, uh, posterior primary process all the way to the mammillary body. <coughs> and also the mesencephalic membrane extending all the way to the basal but not really touching it, except for a few uh, arachnoidal dependencies. And it's all the way to the third nerve, and then all the way to the mesial side of uh, the temporal lobe. And you can also see this very beautifully endoscopically, the endoscopic anatomy. If you're going underneath the chiasm, what we're doing here is going underneath the chiasm, you see the diencephalic membrane, mesencephalic membrane, <coughs> basal tip. And uh, from beneath, you can see uh, again the outer arachnoid membrane and the ligamentous membrane here. Uh, again, endoscopically, if you come from, uh, from underneath, you see that this has to be pierced uh, when you're doing the third reticulous transplant uh, in order for the CSF to flow freely here in the interplanetary system. Thanks.